Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about how, how unfair Magic the Gathering is when you deal with judges who are biased. I think we can all agree that judges have certain biases, and that's why when you have a criminal procedure, you are entitled to a jury of your peers. Now, you can opt out and have a judge decide, but most people do not because they trust 12 random people more than a very wise judge who may have been doing that for a long time. Now, judges aren't even paid. In fact, they pay to do this, which creates a very interesting incentive when you're paying to do something for free. When you're paying to volunteer, you entrench yourself even more. I'm going to use two examples. One example is the one that you are looking at right now. I have not heard of this cheat until recently, and it wasn't a big deal. And as Paula Victor Dama de Rosa has mentioned, he was expecting not support. He was expecting, like he would call it, a witch hunt of sorts. But he just got a bunch of support, and everyone forgave him. Now, had any unknown player like he mentions does the same act like he was doing they would have been in a lot of trouble so what makes a difference between Paula and a unknown player or a maybe a well-known player but without his friendliness now I will say this cheaters are incredibly friendly every supportive Alex Bracini will swear that he is the nicest guy ever and this is true of con men. Con men are very nice. They, they, they have to be to lie and cheat and steal because they have to get your guard down. So it is not surprising to me that niceness is now one of these considerations when it really should not be. It has no logical connection. You can be a very nice individual and also cheat, steal, lie. You could. So back to... If this was any other individual, and Paula Damarosa basically says as much in his own Reddit reply, he would not, he or she would not be treated the same way Paula was treated. And that really is a shame because that is bias. That is unfair treatment. That is discrimination in a nutshell. Let me repeat that again. Discrimination is when you have two people doing the same action and one of them is treated differently than the other based on, you could say, race, ethic. Um, you could say based on personality. Here, we're discriminating based on the fact that Pollard is a very li well-liked individual. The cheat is very, very obvious, right? There is no justification for this mistake. And I've mentioned in my previous video... I think people should just have game losses for, for mistakes. That's it. The intent should not matter. Whether or not you made the mistake should not matter. Like whether or not it was a mistake. And that's what I have a big issue with magic. When you have to determine intent, then you give it to the judges. And the judges, again, are paying to be magic judges to volunteer and give their time. This is not a scenario that works. Having people who are extremely biased individuals because from the very get-go they're paying to be part of this club is not going to work. They're going to favor Paula over me or you. The action should be different from the person. The person committing the action, the whole intent, oh, well, Paula hadn't cheated for many times, he has a good reputation. It's because people react this way to him when he cheats and no one remembers that he cheated. Or he made a mistake. Now, the other example I have is Aaron. Um, Aaron Burbridge, who is the Star City Games champion. She had a very messy board. She was playing Red Deck Wins. And I would argue that had she not had a messy board and had that advantage in her favor, which really... She hit a land pocket. Had she not had a messy board, she would not have been able to get past that land pocket, which is really, really bad for her. And there's a big, big Lyra on the other side with life gain. And if you talk about cards that are really good against red deck wins, Lyra would be top of the list. She doesn't kill Lyra. Lyra swings in or defends or blocks. Lyra prevents her from attacking and gains life in the process. 
And because it's Aaron, and I'm not going to go into Aaron's history, they let it go, and that's that. When you look at Sebastian, he's pretty much persona non grata. If you look at Aaron and Sebastian, what's the real difference here? I don't really see a difference. A mistake was made to benefit the player making the mistake. If people really were making mistakes, wouldn't they 50-50 make mistakes that would hurt them? When's the last time you've seen someone like cheat and like actually hurt themselves by cheating? It doesn't happen that way, right? So I, I don't know. I mean, it seems like Aaron has been treated incredibly differently from Sebastian, even though they both have made mistakes that were beneficial to them and ended up making them magic champions. Paula V, Paula Damarosa, he understands this as well because as soon as he makes that mistake, I'm sure that he was expecting Reddit to go after him. But instead, everyone supported him and clapped hands and said, good job, continue to play well. When if it was anyone else, if it was me, you, Sebastian, we would be f flayed. But if it was Aaron and Paulo de V, Paulo de Rosa, or here's the problem I see: the action should stand alone from the action. It should not be dependent on intent. It should not be on a person committing the action. Did it benefit the person making the action? Yes or no? Yes, it has to be a game loss. So one of the crazy things about Magic Arena is it really has made the Magic Pros mortal. You have people winning every single GP, every single Magic Fest, and it's like, wow, these players are really great at Magic. Then you see them play on Mat MTG Arena, and they suck at Magic. They really are bad at Magic. Because I would testify that Magic is random. When you look at them get a bad hand, a lot of them have no idea how they deal with it. No, no one knows how they're dealing with it, because... Previously, they just cracked a fetch land and Vampiric tutored for whatever they needed. So they never got... So if you look at the history of Magic Online players going to Pro Tours, they do really, really poorly. But their mechanics are solid. Why is that? Is it because everyone in a Pro Tour is cheating? How are the same top... Like Yuya Watanabe, how is he winning so many blanking Pro Tours? Top 8s, Magic Fest... He is like in the top eight every single event he plays at. Paper event. But he sucks at MTG Arena. Efro, he's having a hissy fit because even though they're paying him $70,000 plus, he thinks magic is boring. But isn't the standard on MTG Arena the same as the standard that you play at your local game store? Oh, it's a little different, isn't it? Because you don't have vampiric tutors. You don't have... You know, mana weaving. You don't have shuffling your opponent's deck and making sure they mana flood. I would contest that this autumn is the best example. There's 32 MPL members, right? Autumn was recent. Saviz and the Jessica Epstein was recent. Focus on Autumn. She can beat those 29 other pros who, bet between all of them, Autumn has no top eights. In any event outside the MPL, yet she's the leading mythic inv point, mythic member by points. Are you telling me that she's better than these twenty nine who have hundreds of top eights, hundreds of wins combined? These are people who win in top eight every single event they go to, yet they can't be a person who just started playing Magic. And trust me, Autumn started playing Magic. I think it was Battle from Zendikar was her first set, I believe. That's not that long ago. That's the way it should be. So when you look at when you look at statistics and you look at math, and you're not going to get draw the perfect hand every single time. But to win a Magic Fest or a event with hundreds of people, that's what you need. That is what is required of you. You, you have two bad opening hands and you don't mulligan or you have two bad draws. Let's say with mulligans or without mulligans, you're done, right? You're done because you have to finish XO or X1, maybe X2 of a good tiebreaker to get to the top eight. 
you you draw a few bad hands, you're not getting the top eight. So how do you minimize this randomness? And Magic is a random game, especially if you're playing the same. Aaron is playing red deck wins. At the time, the majority of the field was also playing the same deck. So if you cheat and the other person doesn't cheat, you're going to beat them every time. But if it's a coin flip every time, how are you winning the coin flip every time? It's not because I think you're a bad Magic player because you stuck at MTG Arena. And I know you stink at MTG Arena because I've seen you guys play it. It's, uh, it's astounding how bad these MPL members are at MTG Arena. And that's why they're complaining and saying it's very... They're all going to get kicked out soon. They're not entertaining. They have like... A hundred or less Twitch straight, like viewers, like there are cat. There's a cat channel that gets five hundred Twitch viewers. Combine that little cat channel. It's like a cat daycare or something on Twitch. That that channel is more popular than an entire MPL at any given moment in time. Bye, guys.